Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Welcome back. It's been like two months since I filmed anything, so I don't know what I'm doing. Recently, my 1930s looks on a budget video has just taken off. And since then, I have gotten a lot of people asking me to do another 1930s video. So here we are. Also, it's getting really hot outside. Um, and it'll be hot forever. And I just don't seem to have a lot of summery clothes for some reason, even though like it's hot for like 90% of the year. Um, I have a whole lot more cold weather clothes. So we're gonna remedy that. This video is kind of inspired by my friend Charlotte, who's Tuppence a Penny on Instagram. She did something similar to this several years ago and I told her I was going to copy her and here I am, I'm gonna copy her. While hers was very much more 1940s, mine is going to be late 30s. So I've got three patterns here and two fabrics. This pattern is from 1939. I am going to be making the long skirt and that is going to be out of this fabric. This one I believe is from 1938 and I'm going to be making the dress and the jacket out of the blue fabric and then because of course I am, I'm going to be making my favorite blouse pattern. I have made this pattern just a few times out of this fabric and possibly some other pieces depending on how much fabric I have left over and how much I feel like making. And who knows, maybe I'll make something completely different. I don't know, I'm flying by the seat of my pants because that's what I do. Both of these fabrics look pretty good together and I have a whole bunch of white things in my closet so I think I'll be able to get a pretty good summer wardrobe out of just making a couple of items. First things first, I've got to cut all these things out. So I was pulling out the pattern pieces from this pattern and I found this. This is not the sleeve pattern from this pattern. It's a different sleeve pattern but it looks like this newspaper is from 1941 or 42. But what's really cool is, I don't know if you can see this, but it's got like Chinese lettering on it. I have no idea what it says. How cool is that? I just love when you find interesting things in old patterns. I forgot to mention this, but both of these are cotton poplins. And I'm using a random white cotton that I had in my scrap stash for my collar and cuffs. I could not tell you what kind it is though. I was going to film myself cutting out this pattern, but while this vintage pattern is not in the worst shape I've seen, it's still very brittle, so I'm taking my time with it. So I will spare you the hours I spent cutting this pattern out. One million years later. I am finally done cutting out and marking up this pattern. I'm not gonna lie, this pattern looks very intimidating. I decided to work on the hardest one Get it out of the way. The skirt looks pretty easy. The blouse I know is easy because again I've made it a million times. So this jacket and this dress looks like the absolute hardest thing and plus it's got scallops. The last time I did scallops I failed miserably at it and I vowed to myself I would never sew scallops again. But then I remembered, the last time I sewed scallops was in 2018. I hadn't even been sewing for a year yet. Of course I'm going to do terribly at scallops. I've improved a lot since then, and I think I can do it. So I'm gonna try. <laughs> camera died so I wasn't able to film some of what I did but I honestly haven't gotten very far I stopped for lunch and then it's hot outside I got tired so I haven't done much today but this is what I've done so far got the bodice put together the skirt <laughs> 
I didn't notice this when I cut it out, but the person that made this like back in the 40s or whatever cut off some of the bottom of the back part of the skirt. I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark, but um, here, there, now you can see it. This is the front, this is the back. That's a good amount cut off that I didn't notice. Luckily, I am also short. So this ends about right under my knee, which is kind of where I want it anyway. So I'm just gonna make a small like half inch hem and it should be perfectly fine. And I will take this off to match it. I'm hoping to get the dress done today. Well, minus the hemming, cause I'm gonna let it hang just in case. So far, it's not hard, knock on wood. <laughs> Well, here is the bad news about not making a mock-up. It's too big on me. I mean, it's not too big on me. Like, I think it fits fine, but there are some things that definitely don't fit. I think that this point is supposed to be right at the under bust, which would be like here. So I need to raise it up. I'm gonna mark that. There-ish, yeah because I think the waist is a little low. And I think maybe I need to take the waist in just a, a hair. I don't know. I don't want it to be too tight, but I also don't want it to be too loose. And I think it's a little loose here. So I think I, yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna take it in and then bring it up just a little bit. And I think it'll look good right now. It looks kind of bad, but I don't think I need to take it apart nearly as much as I thought I did. I think I just need to take, obviously, the zipper out because I'll need to take that in on the side. And then I just need to bring this up, like I said, to this little point. Maybe that'll make it look better because right now it does not look good on me. So taking that waistband up half an inch really did the trick. I didn't take it in at all because once I put it on over a shirt, it fit really well, but I think I'm going to make a belt with it because I almost never wear dresses without belts anyway. So I'm going to add that to my list of things I'm making. So I'm almost done with the dress. I have the facing on. I just have a few more steps to finish it. And I'm gonna try to get that done tonight. I collect these little slide fasteners and I just make just a normal belt and then I safety pin it in the back so therefore I can switch them out depending on what color my outfits are and therefore I always perfectly match my outfits. I really don't need a pattern for this belt. I mean this is just a three and a half inch strip with a W at the top and as long as I need it to be but it suits my anxiety to use a pattern so I used this one. You know how you leave a small gap so that you can turn out the belt when you're done sewing it and then you iron it flat and then you're supposed to hand sew that up? Yeah, I've never once sewn up one of those gaps. The belt's done, got the dress done. It is time for me to stop procrastinating and do the jacket. Honestly, I read through the instructions. It doesn't seem too hard. I think the hardest part was figuring out which dots on this were the darts, because there are a lot of dots on this. I don't know if you can see it. I don't, I don't know. A lot of dots. I really like these unprinted patterns because it's so easy to mark where the seam allowance is. And so all you have to do is sew through those dots that you've marked. I wish all patterns had these perforations. It just makes marking fabric so easy. Oh 
Oh my gosh, these sleeves are so flipping cute. So the pattern, for some reason, has me putting on the sleeves before doing anything with the collar. This is the first time I've come across this. Usually sleeves are the last things to put on. But maybe the pattern knows that I don't like anything until I put sleeves on it. So they're like, let's just get the sleeves out of the way so Sam can be happy. Anyway, sleeves. Change of plans. I don't think that this jacket and skirt look particularly good together. They look fine, but it's not my favorite combination. And to be honest, I will probably never wear them together. So I've decided I'm not going to make the blouse out of the green floral fabric, mostly because A, I've already made one of them in a very similar color fabric. B, I just don't think that the floral fabric looks great with the navy. I just don't feel like the weights of these fabrics work well together. These are both cotton poplins from the same manufacturer, but they have completely different weights. This one is nice and light and airy. This one is much stiffer. I just don't understand why solids tend to be of a lesser quality than printed cottons. Like if you say you have a cotton poplin I don't know, I expect them to be the same or very similar fabrics, and they're not. Anyway, I have an idea to save this project. Every piece I've made so far goes really well with other things in my closet, so I'm just going to make one more piece. I'm going to make this top from this Butterick pattern, um, but I'm going to change it a little bit because I don't like the zipper in the back, and anyway, I'll explain it later. But even though these things don't go well together, I haven't failed. I'm just changing the premise a little bit. Last time I made this pattern, there were a few things that I really didn't like about it. I hated the boning because it just didn't fit close enough to my body to like make the boning even useful, so the boning just kind of like pushed everything out. I also made this one smaller. I didn't like the band at the top either. I, I may have sewn it in wrong, let's be honest, but I just didn't like it, so I wanted just a plain neckline. I also didn't like the zipper at the back. It was one of those separating zippers, and because I was using the petite version, it just wasn't long enough for that separating zipper, even though I got the smallest one that I could, so it kind of just pushed out the top 
and the bottom edges weirdly. So I decided buttons was the way to go for this one. Also, because I didn't have any boning in the top, the back was kind of bunching up. So I needed a way to make sure that everything just held up nicely. So instead of doing the halter top, I crisscrossed the straps in the back and then the front of the bodice has the buttons. Very similar to what the pattern actually says to do for the halter top. Fashion show time! Okay, let's start with my least favorite and that's this dress. There is just something about this fit that just doesn't look right. I kind of hate it. hate it even more with the belt. Just doesn't look good. I tried putting a white shirt underneath it. Uh, it's reading schoolgirl or maybe I'm cosplaying as Belle. It's fine. I don't love it. Okay, and then I tried putting this striped shirt underneath it. I think this is my favorite outfit so far, but it doesn't read vintage. It reads more kindergarten teacher, which I love. It's quirky. I don't know if it's my style though. I don't know. Overall, I don't like this dress. Here it is with the jacket. Again, it looks okay, but I have this fuller skirt that looks so much better with it. Like, look how much I'm feeling this outfit. Yeah, rock it, Sam. <laughs> I also really like it tucked into these shorts. It's much more sporty. And speaking of sporty, look at this resort wear outfit I came up with. I mean, it could be these pants. I do love these pants. I did not make these pants. These were originally from Mod Cloth, part of their collective collaboration. I got them from ThreadUp, but I freaking love them. And I love it with this top. This is going to be my go-to summer outfit. And of course with the skirt, also very classy, very nice. I also really love this outfit. It's super easy to wear and super classy and super fun. I just love it. I just love both these items. Skirt's also super versatile. Here it is with just a nice casual top. Very nice, Sam, very nice. And then also you can super class it up. This is why I didn't make the blouse pattern that came with the skirt because I already had this top. This is a vintage 30s top, but I'm pretty sure that you could modify that blouse pattern to make this top pretty easily. Really, all you'd have to do is make the bottom go into points instead of just flat across. As I was modeling this outfit, I had an idea. Honestly, I think this is the best outfit so far with this dress. I may end up wearing this one. I love this outfit. I don't know if it particularly reads 1930s or 40s or the even 50s. I feel like it looks more like early 2000s. I feel like I wanted this outfit when I was like a kid. I think if I put on like little white slides, it would be early 2000s, but I love it. It's super comfy. It's so pretty. It's like, oh, I just love it so much. I also really like the skirt with all my other pieces and the top with my other pieces. I think these are two super versatile pieces. I also really like the jacket. I think I'll wear the jacket quite often too. I won't wear the dress. I actually hate the dress. It to me looks like it looks like a school uniform. It might be the fabric I used. It's just too stiff. I don't know. I hate it. I hate it. I'm never gonna wear it. I'll be honest with you. I'll probably never ever wear it, which makes me really sad because that's what started this whole video is that I wanted a little jumper dress, but that's isn't it unfortunately. Anyway, I'm still calling this project a success. I have more summer clothes to wear, which was the whole point. I hope you liked this video. I hope you'll stick around. Um, if you did like it, you know, like, subscribe, share, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. You've been on YouTube before, um, and I will see you in my next video.